Hey everybody, this is Brian at Primo Chill. Today we are going to do a video about our Phase 2 CTR Reservoirs. Um, this is the second release of our CTR Reservoir, um, which is basically a compression tube reservoir. Uh, all of these tubes are not threaded. Uh, they are compression, so they're using an O-ring to uh, you know, make the seal and hold back the water in the, in the reservoir itself. Very, very similar to our rigid compression fittings uh, in the way that the um, ring, excuse me, the ring and the, uh, the O-ring make the seal uh, around the tube. So, so today we'll just kind of go over, uh, you know, not ex in extensive lengths, but in, in fair amount of lengths to discuss, you know, how we get these assembled, uh, how you're able to use them, you know, there's so many different color combinations that you can use in the in, in the reservoir. Uh, you know, it'd probably take a whole week to just cover, you know, the different combinations that you guys can have. So, um, right here, you see these uh, these two reservoirs here in the front. This is the D5 enabled CTR Phase Two reservoir. Um, as you can see, it has a cap at the end with an inlet or an out or two inlets. You could actually have three inlets if you wanted. Um, the way it's basically set up now is just an inlet here and an outlet down here um, where the pump side is. And we also have mounting uh, holes on the bottom so you can mount it to uh, you know your case very simply um, and you know be off to the races. This one you don't need the, the actual uh, ring to go around it to hold it in place. We're actually using the mount on the bottom of these two. So, um, as you can see in this, there is a, uh, on the inside, there is a vortex killer, which basically, uh, you know, when we designed this pump head, we knew that we would have a little bit of a vortex in there just because it, the, the pressure of that pump is, is pretty amazing. And, and, you know, being in a cylindrical tube like this, we needed something to block it up before it inletted into the pump. So we came up with this, uh, pretty awesome, uh, you know, vortex killer we call it to basically just you know stop any vortex and have it nice fluid <clears throat> uh, inlet to the pump so I'll go over this a little bit further in detail um, I wanted to show you the next one uh, which is our basically our CTR low profile and if you could see it is super low profile you know it's not very thick on the ends like some of the other reservoirs that are out there they have a you know a big block, you know, big end on it that's threaded halfway into it. So this is real, real, real low profile. Um, both sides, uh, top, bottom, front, bottom, however you want to just uh, go with it, is you'll see that there's four ports and four ports on top. So if you can see here, these are our rigid compression fittings, and you notice you'd be you can easily fit four uh, fittings on top. So if you want to do, you know, kind of a manifold system to where you have four in, four out, uh, you know, put this place in a system where, you know, you can have all your returns coming and uh, your outlets going out. So this is the CTR Low Pro. Uh, it's, you know, pretty basic in its design, um, but, you know, works, works perfect. So what I want to kind of do now is cover a few of the, I would say, caps that we, uh, we're going to have available for this initial launch of the CTR2, uh, the CTR, sorry, Phase 2. And as you can see in the back here, we have three different caps. We have a the D5 pump end, which is basically the end that you see on here, but this is just clear. We will have them in clear uh, PMMA. We'll also have it in uh, white Delrin or POM and a black version. So you will be able to buy these, uh, the actual pump versions, uh, whether it's in uh, clear, white, or black, already assembled, ready to go. Uh, those will be uh, available at the re resellers here pretty soon. So this is the pump version, or I'm sorry, this is, yeah, the, the pumped cap. This is a kind of a manifold type coupler to where you can actually hook two tubes together. So if you want them to run, you know, 
uh, a blue tube on this side, a red tube on this side, or you know, uh, one that's 120 millimeters on this side and one that's 80 on this side, however you want to do it, this will actually uh, enable you to hook two tubes together. Um, this will be sold separately, so if you want to add this to your system, you would just have to buy this part separately. Um, and then the other one is our end cap. And basically you have three inlets on this end cap, two on the side, and one on the top. So those are right now the three parts that are available uh, for the phase two. We have a couple other in uh, R&D right now that we're pretty excited about um, adding a, a second, you know, DDC pump we're thinking about. Um, so this is the end caps for the phase two. Um, as you can see here on the other side, there are the vortex killers and these vortex killers are going to come in two, four, six, eight, nine different colors. Um, as you can see, this one is just the red vortex killer. And, you know, we have the UV color, so you know those vortex killers inside the D5 enabled uh, phase two are removable. It comes stock with a clear, but if you want to add, you know, an orange or a yellow or whatnot to it, it just pops out and you put the new one in. Um, so right now, I kind of want to cover what the low profile um, CTR. The phase two low profile is going to look like when you guys get it. Um, it's essentially going to look like this without the fittings. Uh, you know, these on top here. Uh, so I can kind of walk you through how it actually gets assembled. It's very, very similar to your uh, our rigid compression fittings, to where you put the uh, the ring on first, and then you sleeve it, and then I'm sorry. You put the ring on first, put the O-ring on, and then put the cap on. So basically this is the end cap. And this end cap basically sits right on the end of this tube res here. Very simple. So what we want to do is, is we'll put the ring on first. And then we'll put the O-ring. Sorry. We'll put the O-ring on next, as you can see and then we'll put the cap on. So with that, we're just gonna roll this O-ring down and then we're gonna take this ring and screw it right on. And then when it gets finger snug, you'll see that it's you know, not gonna come off. I do have uh, a good way to show you guys how to um, tighten this once this end cap is on here. It's kind of hold, kind of hard to hold these two here. So what we do basically here when we assemble them and ship them out to you guys is we put two fittings in here, one on this side and a fitting on this side. We hold the ring and then we just use the two fittings here to tighten it. Simple as that. Nice and tight. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and do the other side here for you just to kind of show you how quick and fast it is to assemble these. Oops, I put it on upside down. It would help if the thread's the other way. Just move your O-ring up, come in with the, the compression ring itself. Turn it till it's nice and tight. Then again, all you would do is put your fittings on the end, hold the ring like so, and then just tighten it like this. So once those are on there, you notice that the res is complete. Nice, simple, easy way to build it. So what we've noticed through all the testing that we've done on these is that in some of the higher, higher pressure systems, um, you know, where multiple radiators, lower flow blocks, um, you know, pumps that are pretty, uh, really strong, 
what we've noticed is that these end caps sometimes, depending on the pressure in the system, have uh, you know moved a little bit. Once these caps are on, they're pretty hard to get off. But as a precaution, what we've done is we've added two more O-rings in the package for these CTRs. Let me get this unscrewed for you real quick. What we've done is these aren't installed. The two brez, the, the low profile two brez as is comes with one, one O-ring installed. We add a second O-ring in the package in case you have a higher pressure system uh, that's creating a lot of PSI in the system, which one O-ring, you know, we found one O-ring works great on the low profiles. If you want the extra assurance of it, you can put a second O-ring on there. Put your cap on, roll the two O-rings up, and bring your, bring your ring up. Tighten as you would any, you know, like normally doing it. Now there's just two O-rings in there. And it just makes for, you know, a tighter fit. You know, they're not gonna go anywhere with two O-rings on there. So, if you feel more comfortable having a second O-ring in there, if you have a higher pressure system, um, you know, I would, you know, maybe test outside of your loop with one O-ring with your system, uh, you know, to see if you're seeing any movement of that end cap. But most of the time when these O-rings are installed, they're installed, uh, you know, with, with no issues. So, so that's kind of the low profile. Um, just to cover a couple things that come with the low profile um, reservoir is any of the low profile reservoirs that are larger than 80 millimeters, they're going to come with two brackets for mounting. And basically, these brackets are pretty simple to use. You can basically just take this bracket and you can actually stretch it over it. And as you can see here, let me see if I can bring this up a little bit closer for you guys. As you can see here, this is the base and this little loop here goes into the base here where this loop is. So if you can see that, it's kind of black, sorry, but it fits right in there and that holds it into place. Now you take the provided thumb screw that comes with it Sorry, it's kind of hard to do. There we go. And you basically tighten that thumb screw in on the other side, and it basically clamps that tube res together, you know, to where it holds it in place. Again, we ship with two, anything that's bigger than an 80 mil. Um, we've had a lot of customers that wanted two in there. Uh, you know, when the, when the res got full of water, it was a little heavy, so we decided that two um, brackets for the 120, the 240, and the 360, that we would definitely need two of them. So, um, so you have two brackets. Also in that, um, the phase two, you get a little mounting template. And basically what this is, is this mounting template you can put on, you know, to the wall of your case or onto the side of the case or wherever you're mounting the actual reservoir and this will give you a perfect template to drill your holes to where they match up with the bottom of the bracket. So this is just a mounting template. So when you want to position it in your case, you can use this, drill out the holes and then simply screw right into there and you don't have to worry about the holes lining up correctly. Also with the low profile CTR uh, phase two is you get four of the nickel plated black low profile plugs basically. Since you have four out, uh, you know, four on each side, I'm not, you know, I don't know a lot of people that are gonna run all of them, but you know, we included them so it's a little bit easier for you guys to actually you know, install them if you know you have to use this one port and not this port. So basically we included enough plugs 
to plug the entire reservoir except for two 2G quarter spots. So whether it's an inlet and an outlet, obviously you need that with a reservoir and in the, an inlet and an outlet. So we provide enough stop uh, stop plugs to enable you to you know plug everything except two holes. We also include two LED Gina quarters, and basically what this Gina quarter is, it's a it's an LED light plug, and it comes with this little rubber. Um, hard to see this little rubber sleeve that goes over your LED and then you push it in to the actual plug itself and that LED stays in there it's pretty hard to get out so most of the LED uh, ports uh, port plugs that you see they don't have this little rubber uh, rubber here and the LEDs uh, fall right out so we include two of these and four of the metal stoppers and that's about it for the low pro so as you can see, the build of it is very simple. Uh, you know, plugging it up is going to be simple. Mounting it's going to be simple. You know, everything is included. Uh, you know, the extra O-rings are included if you want to feel you know a little bit safer about it. Um, you know, in a, in a higher pressure system, you can add the second O-ring with no problems. Um, so everything you need to get the system up and running, uh, as far as just the tube res, this is pretty much the way to do it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and set this stuff aside and get to the D5 version of the phase two. And I'm gonna go ahead and assemble that as well. So you can kind of see how that gets assembled. Let me grab some of this stuff and put it out here for it. Phase two does not come with a D5 pump. You will need to supply that D5 pump yourself. Um, so you know I'm showing it in the video to how to install it, but it does not come uh, you know with the actual pump itself. So as you can see here, uh, I have we're going to do a clear version. I have a clear uh, the D5 end here and a clear end cap. And for the D5 version, the O-ring is already going to come installed, and basic uh, for the pump side. And basically, that O-ring uh, basically allows to seal the pump on this side, so water doesn't come out this side. Um, so that's all. That's always going to come pre-installed on your head, uh, your D5 pump head. Again, when you buy a, a Phase Two CTR D5. Uh, it's going to come assembled, so you don't have to worry about assembling it, but I just want to show you how it actually gets assembled. So, we have a blue 240 millimeter tube, laser cut, both sides, and what we want to do basically is we want to take our ring, slide our ring on, and for the D5 we definitely recommend two O-rings per side, uh, just because of the, the pressure of the system, uh, the pressure of the actual D5 itself, that it creates in this tube res, two O-rings, uh, you know, we've been testing it for months now, uh, two O-rings are, are just perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get two O-rings on here, and the pump head. So as you can see, the pump head can go either way, but not really because this is the pump side, and as you can see, the pump side has kind of a helix to it and it spins out and the fluid comes out this way. So as your pump revolves, it inlets from here and then it spits out to this side. So, so you don't want to install, obviously, your tube res on that side. You want to install it on the side that has the lip in it, right here. So we we'll go ahead and put that on. We're gonna slide the two O-rings up, like so. And then we're gonna sling the ring down. This one's a little bit easier because you have a little bit more grip with here. So you can actually just kind of turn this and tighten this at the same time by hand. And that CTR, that pump guy's on there with no problems. So we'll do the top now, or I actually built it upside down because the Primo Chill would be down here. But for the video, this will do just fine. We want to put our ring on first. 
And then we want to put O-ring 1 on, O-ring 2 on, and then we want to grab our end cap. And obviously the end cap can only install one way. Slide our O-rings up, and then we want to slide our ring up. Tighten, just like we tighten the other side. Now on this side, I wouldn't tighten this one all the way down because if you look at it now, the mounting for this side is over there and the mounting for this is it's kind of twisted on the tube. So what we recommend is kind of twist this side until you get it right and you can lay it down flat and then continue to tighten it. That way this mount and this mount are completely flat. So if you have this mount on the other side, you know, you're not going to be able to mount it flat up against something. So basically that is how the D5 Phase 2 enabled pump uh, works. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the actual D5 pump on it now. Um, in your kit, like I said, the D5, is, the D5 pump head is going to have an O-ring installed here. And then we have a shim, a shim O-ring that we have that you're going to also add to the inside and this is a ton of testing that we've done to get this to be perfect um, this shim basically keeps if i can get this keeps this part here as close as possible to the inlet so there's less loss and this inlet is close enough to it to where it's all the water's directing into here and not flowing over the edges. So to cover that real quick again, you're gonna have the D5 pump, uh, pump head here, and then you're gonna take the shim, and you're just gonna lay the shim over on top of the other row ring. Very simple, lay it over there. And then for your, your ring, same ring, this ring works on the pump side and the compression side. So don't worry about you know it you know being a different thread. So basically, you take your D5 pump, you drop the wire through like so. Slide your ring up like that, and then we just want to drop this the D5 head in there, and you want to kind of give it a good little force to make sure that it's making contact. And then we're just going to spin this on. to where it's nice and snug. And you can tell how snug it is if this motor turns or not. If this motor doesn't turn, then it's plenty snug enough. But if you notice, if it's not tight enough, this motor will turn. That means it's not making contact with the O-ring. So we definitely want to make sure that this is tightened all the way down to where this pump does not move. So that is a D5 enabled phase two CTR. Pretty slick, pretty easy, pretty, uh, you know, streamlined. It doesn't have a huge pump head on the end of it. You know, our pump head is, you know, no more than two inches big. And it, you know, it's round just like the reservoir. So as you can see, that's what it looks like installed. And looks pretty awesome. So and the best thing about it is the performance is incredible. So we have a, a few of these out to some testers to get us some accurate numbers on the actual flow out of this radiator. I'm sorry, this uh, tube res with this pump. And we should be able to post some of that data, you know, in a month or so, uh, you know, after these have hit the store. Um, I do want to show you a couple things on the pump head itself. Obviously it has two bottom mounting holes. It has, when looking at the rate, when the, looking at the pump like this, there's a hole on this side, and there's a hole on this side. This side is an actual inlet. And this inlet is there, you know, we put it there because we had room to put it there. Um, you know, we've done a fair amount of testing with it. There hasn't been an issue. Uh, we have seen a performance drop a little bit. Um, with having an inlet here. This is kind of a, a freebie 
we, you know, if you want to use it, you can. Um, we recommend outlet on, you know, this cannot be an outlet, it's only inlet, and this is outlet. So, when looking at it, you'll see on the left hand side, this is outlet, this is inlet. So, again, you don't have to use this. This is, we kind of put it in there because we had room to put it in there, and, you know, we like the results so far, but you know we're not telling everybody to use it at this point. Um, a normal setup would be inlet at the top or the sides, and then outlet here, and this would just get a cap. So that kind of covers what the D5 uh, pump head you know kind of does. Again, you can use this as an inlet. Um, we just can't guarantee that the performance is going to be as good as inlet here, outlet here. So. So, to cover what else comes with the D5 Phase 2, uh, we have all the uh, port caps to, to plug everything up except for two outlets on here, same as we did on the Low Pro. And then we also have a, I don't know if you can see this, this is a mounting template. And basically what this mounting template is, is if you look here, this mounting template lines up perfect here, and this one down here when you slide it. So, the reason we have that this can be adjusted is, depending on, you know, if you take this, uh, you know, some of the times when we cut these tubes and it's installed, you know, this measurement from here to here is not always exact. So we use a sliding template. So basically what you do is, you put your template over the existing holes of yours, like so, and then you would just tape them together, right there, and then you would take this template as your mount template. So you'd put this in your case on the sidewall, or you know, on the you know wherever you're going to decide to put it. Uh, this would be your mounting template. So, little handy tool to make sure that you can drill the holes and the holes are going to be where the, the tube res is exactly. So, um, one last thing that we do have, um, and kind of put this together, we, with all the testing that we did, you know, a lot of the testing that we do is outside of cases, um, outside of systems, uh, you know, on our wet benches, so we're able to test, uh, you know, new products, uh, you know, without trashing, you know, basically a system if, you know, that new product happened to go wrong, uh, you know, if we have an issue with the, the, the res or, you know, any of our fluids that we test. So, but when we went to install this, we noticed that, you know, there's not going to be a ton of room, um, you know, once you mount this, say, up against the back of your case, there's not a lot of room to kind of get out there and bend and all that good stuff. So what we decided to do was uh, include some uh, M4 screws. And these M4 screws are, I think, 70 mils long. And we also included a, a standoff. And basically what this standoff is going to do is, you know, you're going to mount this through the back of your case. You're going to put this standoff, screw it all the way down to here, so this holds this screw in place, okay? So when you go to mount it, you want to bring this down about halfway, and then this is going to screw in to the back here. And then when you go to tighten it from the back of the case, you can cinch up this to set your depth and also make sure that this kind of locks in place. So this will give you about a two and a half inch standoff from the back of your case. So, you know, these four long screws that we're gonna include with it, you know, basically mount into the base here, and it's, give you, and it's gonna give you that much of a standoff from the back. So, again, those are included. Uh, the uh, the standoffs are included, so we'll have you know we'll have a couple shots of this installed um, probably in the next couple weeks. Uh, we have a couple builds coming up, 
So we'll have that and kind of show you how it's actually standing off from it. So one last thing I did forget to show you is the Vortex Killer and how it actually gets installed. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, again, the D5, when you purchase it from us, pre-installed. The D5 Killer, or the uh, Vortex Killer is already in there. So let me uninstall this, this tube real quick. All right, so this is the tube rest side. Let me get the actual, let's see if a dark one is gonna be a little bit better to see. Yeah, that would be a lot easier to see. So, if you notice, this is the tube side, and the inlet, again, when looking at the pump side, you're always gonna watch where this flow goes for the outlet, okay? So the flow comes, you know, comes in from here, spins around, and shoots out this side, okay? So this inlet side actually comes into here and then pumps back up into the reservoir. So this is kind of the, the experimental port, basically. Um, so what we have is, is on our Vortex Killer, you can see is we have this cutout only on one side. And this basically goes over that inlet so it doesn't block it. So if you do decide to use it, uh, you know, you're not blocking that inlet. So basically to install this Vortex Killer, you would just line it up straight or, you know, to where it's it's open in this slit and you basically just take your fingers and you snap the part in. Part stays in there, doesn't come out, it's, you know, there's no issues with it turning or popping out. Uh, we've made it nice and snug inside of here. If you do want to change it to a different color, you just basically turn this and it comes right out. So that's the Vortex Killer. Again, comes with a clear. We have a bunch of colors that you can change them out. If you, you know, if you want to have a white paddle or a red or a blue or a green or whatnot. So again, very simple to install. Just make sure it's lined up and snap it into place. And she's good to go. Put it back on your res and Vortex Killer is installed. So. That kind of covers that. One last thing I want to cover before we, uh, we wrap this video up is our coupler. And we're pretty excited about this coupler just because it's, you know, something unique. You can get a look that nobody else has, uh, you know, in their system. Just kind of gives you a very unique look. Uh, or, you know, it actually adds functionality to it because it gives you uh, either an inlet or an outlet in the middle of your tube res. So what we have here, as you can see, is the pass-through coupler. And this pass-through coupler basically lets you mount a tube on this side and a tube on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And so let's say I wanna do a green tube on this end. This is 120 millimeters. I would install it like that. Put my O-ring on it. Oops, don't forget the ring. With the threads to, let's see, we're gonna do it this side. So, move that up, move your O-ring up, take your ring, tighten your ring down, and you have half of the res. So, say you wanna, you know, you only have room in your system to do a smaller one here and a you know a really tiny 80 mil off the top. You could do that simply. Let me get another oh, uh, little ring here so we can do this. All right, so we would take this one here, line it up here, drop an O-ring on. Drop the compression ring on, move your O-ring down. Tighten your ring. 
like so. Then you would just take your last, you know, for your end caps, you'd basically just take the end cap of your choice. So if you wanted to put a D5 on here, which I recommend doing a D5 at least with a 120 and an 80. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go 80, 80. Um, I don't think there's enough room in it. So you could put a D5 on this end and then a normal cap on this end. And basically, let's see if I can move that down for you. You can kind of see that, you know, you have lots and lots of options as far as letting, you know, inlets and outlets and all that good stuff. So that is the coupler system. Um, basically, we will have all of the end caps themselves for sale. We'll have the, uh, so say if you wanted to do a, uh, you know, instead of a mounted end cap on there, you want to just do a low profile end cap on there, you'll be able to buy just the, the low profile version uh, end cap. And then basically you'll just, you know, so we'll take this, put our O-ring on, put our cap on, and then we can move our O-ring up. See if I can take this end off real quick. All right, Let's see if we can get this here. All right, there we go. So if you want to do just a low pro on this side, you could. I think we have a couple pictures on Facebook of us. Uh, we built one with a, a low pro on both ends, like this. And it had a coupler in the middle. So if you want to just use it as a reservoir, and then you have the mount here, so you don't have to add, uh, you know, a bracket to hold it in place. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, we've put a ton of time and a ton of energy into this product, um, a ton of testing. Uh, you know, we learned quite a bit from our uh, initial CTR, uh, you know, that we had launched uh, last year. And, you know, this is just the phase two of it. It's a natural progression, us figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, you know, and it makes it a real easy, simple, uh, you know, put together system for you guys. So if, you know, later down the road, you want to change the theme of your, your computer, uh, you know, you can change the tube colors out. You can change the coupler colors out. You can change the ring colors out the vortex killers out. So ton of different things that you can do. So to kind of wrap things up, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, all these two colors that we have, they all match our rigid tubing. So let's say you have a, a blue rigid tube and you wanted a blue reservoir to go with it. So you essentially, you know, these two, our perfect blues together. You can do a rigid line with one of our blue reses and it matches perfect. Uh, another great thing that we've done on our aluminum rings is we have two styles of the aluminum rings. We have the straight up knurls, which match the straight up knurls on our compression fittings, or we have the normal diamond knurl, which you know also match our diamond knurl rigids. So kind of see we're getting to the point to where everything in the system is finally matching as far as acrylic colors as far as aluminum colors so you know we're trying to make it easy on you guys to set up systems and really make them look good so uh, I think that's it for me so if you have any questions we're gonna go ahead and get this posted up on Yahoo or I'm sorry not Yahoo on YouTube uh, so you guys can see it see you know how easy it is to put together how easy it is to use uh, how friendly, you know, the colors are so you can make it your own with the couplers, you know, you can pretty much build, you know, your masterpiece. So, uh, again, I really appreciate, appreciate, uh, you know, all the feedback on this product that we've had, uh, you know, to make this evolution, uh, you know, to a phase two. So, you know, I just, I think this is a perfect product for, you know, pretty much all the users that are out there. So again, we thank you for your business. Uh, we thank you for your support. And 
if you have any questions or concerns, uh, you know, feel free to contact us at support.primochill.com or just stop by Facebook. Uh, we got a couple guys in there that uh, you know love helping people out on their builds. So for now, that'll be it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much.